Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of IT Pro TV. I'm your host, Dom Pizzet, and in this episode, we're diving back into the world of CompTIA's IT fundamentals. Specifically, we're taking a look at business and productivity software, which is really kind of like one of the most important things that we use a computer for after video games, right? So we're right. going to leave the video games part off. We're going to tackle the business and productivity side, and here to help us with that is Mr. Ronnie Wong. Ronnie, thanks for joining us in studio. Well, Don, thank you again for having me as we continue on taking a look at the idea and the world of software outside of video games. I know it's hard <laughs> to actually believe, but yes, my video game prowess goes to free sell, I think, is, is pretty much where I get to. But we know that video games are pretty much the driving force here. But in a business, right, uh, the companies that you end up working for, it's not going to really be around free sell or even whatever other game that you tend to install on a computer. It's going to be around the idea here of what, what we call productivity software and business software as well. Now, if you're not familiar with those things, we want to make sure that you understand what those are and also some of the different applications that are there. And then we also want to make sure that you understand well, how you, you access them as well. Okay, So you'll see that over time it's changed a bit the, the, from when I first learned and when Don first learned. Uh, we actually see and we'll show you those differences too as we get started. So we should see a lot of that and you should be able to learn at least some of the functionalities of the programs that you're more than likely to encounter as you end up working for a business. Okay. All right. Well, Ronnie, um, when we say like business and productivity software, obviously there's a lot of different types of businesses out there and there's a lot of different types of productivity. So where, where do we want to start? Like, What is one of the more common applications that a business is going to use? When it comes down to it, right, the idea of productivity is the key, but the, the big player in this market is something uh, that, that we tend to do all the time, which is, of course, write letters or memos or draft anything that, that we might might take a look at, right? Uh, and even though that might come down to email, most of the time it's going to come down to, of course, a word processor that you would use. And so we want to make sure that you're familiar with some of the concepts of the word processor and what you can do with it. And also some of the other things that you can do now, now that the, the product has changed just a little bit to help us to see a few different things. And we'll, we'll see that as well. Okay. So let's take a look at my computer as we get started. And this will help us out. I've pulled up probably the most common one or probably the, the one that you'll see most often in business called Microsoft Word. And I've launched it up uh, from the actual start menu. I simply come down here to my Windows button. And if I scroll all the way down to the W's uh, down here, You'll see right here where it says Word 2016, and it's been uh, freshly installed, so it's fairly new. And right here is the interface that we see, right? So at the very beginning, when we want to type out something, it might be something like a letter. So I might actually put in, uh, dear, uh, whoever it is, customer. So I can begin typing in a letter just like when I first started out. This wasn't, of course, on a computer. It was on just a regular typewriter. And so at this point, we can continue to type and we can use the keyboard as we would normally use. If I want to put an indent in there, I just type in tab and say, hey, this is great to see you. Hello. Great to hear from you once again. Okay. So simply typing in sentences and words, but you can continue to add and change this a bit more on what your need is actually going to be. Once you do something like this, the nice thing about the word processor as well is that we can change a few things. If you think that this is looking a little bit small, I can simply uh, select and change the font size if I want to. Let's change this up to a 24 point font that will make it a little bit easier to see. If I wanted to emphasize it some other way, of course I can change and create bold or an italic if I want to, or even better, change and add in a different color. So formatting can be done in this way. And as I'm doing this mainly though, okay, well, that's going to take a lot of time and a lot of process, Don, having to do this sentence by sentence or, you know, paragraph by paragraph, it becomes that, you know, a little bit more challenging, but there's different other tools uh, that are up here that make it a little bit easier for us to be able to do a lot more in bulk at one time. Okay. And, and everything you've shown so far, Ronnie, is pretty standard. Like right. any word processor you get is going to be able to do the stuff that Ronnie's shown you, but then where it starts to deviate, depending on which product you get, there's a lot of advanced features. And I know like like Microsoft Word, but let's say you want to write the great American novel and you, you, you really want to go crazy. It can do typesetting and table of contents and even create an index for you automatically, like all of this really advanced functionality. Not every word processor has that. 
And that's part of one of the reasons why Microsoft Word is so popular is that it's extremely feature rich, right? It really is. It brings in so many of the different tools and technologies we need. If you wanted to write that novel or you wanted to actually create a, a research paper, it has some built-in tools and utilities for you that are really neat, uh, that are foundational. So if I uh, select like one of these, up, let me go ahead and select like references as well. So this is a good one. Uh, since Don had talked about the idea of one insert in a table of contents, and I had already created this novel, I can go back in and highlight the portions that I want and say, here's what my table of contents are going to be based around. And by simply using the utilities that are there, and I don't have anything to, to add in, but I can actually go ahead and begin to format what that table of contents is going to look like. So for example, oh, it says uh, apply a heading style that will work, but there's no entry. So that's why it's not working here on this sense. But you can do that and if you have 50 pages and say here's the headings that I want to use by using certain styles uh, that are also available if I go back to fi uh, not file home uh, and up here where you have heading and different styles you can chop up or divide it up using these things and then your table of contents can be created around that option to help you to divide that up the other thing that's neat Don as well is something like mailings if I wanted to create envelopes I can go ahead and also do that as well different labels that actually allow us to do this, create a list of people that I want to send it out to and then make a generic form letter and have it merge and combine into one document. So there's a lot of power here that we do end up seeing in just this idea. Now, Don, when we start to take a look at something like this, right? this product itself is installed on my own computer. So I can download it from where I purchased it from, make sure it's actually installed. It may take a few minutes for you to install everything that you need to. But once it's installed, it's right there and it's going to be available on that computer. When I go to save the document, it's fairly easy. They have a nice little icon up here at the top, which looks like a little floppy disk. I, I think it's still funny that that's the icon for saving today. Uh, it's a little floppy disk. And then I have choices that I can make on where I want to save it very beginning everything was just saved to well the PC itself so it's here I can enter in a document and I'll call this one my first document so first of a first uh, first document at the same time it attaches in a file letter for us if I can get a hold of my mouse and you an extension I should say a, a word document extension that you see right here dot docx which is a uh, fairly common extension that you see and that means that the operating system when you click on that file it will automatically associate it to this program so you don't always have to launch the program up first and then go ahead and select file open and find this document if you go and find that file in your explorer uh, inside of file explorer you can double click on it and it will automatically associate the application with it and open it up as well just make sure you save the actual changes and when you do so you will now have a document saved up at the top. It will tell you now that this uh, particular document has been saved with the name that we have on here. Okay, So it's actually a really neat product and what it does. And we've just shown you just a little bit of what it can do, but it can do so much more. And in your business, depending on what you need, you may end up finding out that, hey, uh, there, there's a lot more to this. Now, Don, starting off with a blank document is not the, you know, not the place that a lot of people like to begin. So Word helps you out by selecting new. Notice they can even start you off by using different templates that are here, okay, that are also available to us as well. And that will at least get you started, give you kind of a, a nice boilerplate that you can kind of fill in the gaps and be able to select and do. So for example, if we selected just this title, I can now create this blog post uh, and select create. And here it goes, it automatically formats it uh, as well. Uh, register a blog account. I'm going to register that later. I didn't create a blog account at this point. Uh, <laughs> so here it is. You enter in the title and go, hey, this is CompTIA IT, oops, IT Fundamentals. From this point, it's going to help you to already establish the way that the blog should, uh, you know, allow you to type out, do whatever you want to. And then, of course, you can upload that to your blog uh, if you want to. So there's a lot of different features that are just built into the word processors, not just like what we used to do on the typewriter. Print it out, make sure it's actually right, and you're okay. You can really enhance your documents very powerfully with a word processor.
Yeah, now that is a, a very common piece of software, and for a lot of people that are just getting into computers, that's one of the first applications they're exposed to. But it doesn't take long before you start to get the limitations of it, right? <laughs> that, you know, a word processor is only as good as the data that you feed into it. Not all software is like that, though, right, Ryan? There's some software that we can give it data, and it can actually turn it into more than what we gave it. And I'm thinking about, like, financial data right. and other records keeping. Uh, what what are solutions that we have in that area? Yeah, so when we start to take a look, another productivity solution for us that helps us to get our job done is going to be something like Excel or a spreadsheet program. So we're just using this because it's probably the most common uh, application that you'll end, or the most common applications that you'll end up seeing. Let me close out of Word for right now. Uh, looks like I've opened up Word quite a bit here. Uh, and then we'll go to Excel. So I'm simply going to use the search bar down here at the bottom and type in Excel 2016. And inside of Excel 2016, well, now it launches up this way instead. It used to launch up to a nice spreadsheet that you just had to kind of figure out what you wanted to do. But now it says, all right, you've got options. It wants you to either use one of these templates that are predefined, or you can create what we call a, a blank workbook. So this one, Don, allows us to essentially do calculations, allows us to take numbers and be able to do something with them. So I'm going to use just a simple formula for us to do that. And I'll use cell A1 and B1 and put the result in C1 is what I will do here. Okay. So when we take a look at this, uh, I actually want the result to be here. I have to begin with an equal sign. Then I can type in the formula that I want. And that's going to be A1 plus B1. Okay. And then I'll just press enter. Now I can put whatever numbers I want to in here. So Don, if I do uh, 3650, uh, 3500 here plus 500, notice it automatically calculates and changes that up uh, to, to give me what I actually need here. So you might be saying, hey, that's not super impressive. I could have done that in my head. I don't need it. But when we start having more and more of these columns and these rows, that's where it becomes impressive. So for example, in this version of Excel, I think you can go up to like 65,000 columns, if, if I remember right, maybe even more for all I know now, and then somewhere around a million plus rows. Well, me typing in a manual formula where I'm even calculating, let's say, a thousand of these might be a little bit harder than I think and trying to do whatever I want to. If I want to change the formula, it makes it very easy too. What if I didn't want uh, addition and I wanted uh, multiplication? Here? Well, I just simply change that to an asterisk. And notice I just changed one cell. I didn't have to go back in and go, let me refigure the entire form. If I know the basics, it will at least tell me. And so very simple calculation, but Excel also has well, what we call different functions that allow us to do a lot more of these calculations as well. If I select this drop down, you can see it will do financial calculations, date and time, math and math and trig, Don. Uh, yeah, that's not going to be my area of specialty. Uh, oh, engineering, I've, I mean, amazing some different, ca uh, you know, categories that are here for the calculations that can be done. So you expect me to believe that you're not doing differential equations just uh, on the side? Uh, no, I, I am not doing <laughs> differential equations. I, I, I bet you, you know, beyond the idea here of division might actually throw me here, Don. So uh, the, the great thing, it does it. Now, the other thing, though, Don, is that as good as this is, as good as what we have here, we also realize that not everybody else is going to be able to do this. So unlike Don, who can actually do that stuff in his head, uh, <laughs> most of us need something that visually displays what we want. Okay, So we can take a formula that we actually put in here, or we can actually create these rows and columns, and tell it to report it to us differently, such as a chart of some sort. Because, hey, chart this out, help us to actually see what we want to do. Now, I've already uh, made a document for us, so let me go back and uh, create, uh, pull up my document here. And this is a fairly simple one that I used off of the template as it, uh, well, maybe not. There we go. Okay. So this one is formatted as well, and that's a kind of also the power of Excel. Not only does it allow us to take numbers and to do what we want to with it and to show some of the basic formulas and calculations, it can format and make it look nice. Now, you might be wondering, why do I care about this? Well, in a business, right? They're going to make decisions based off these numbers, and we want to make the numbers as easy to read as possible. I don't want to show 6 million rows or 5 million rows, whatever I want. I want to actually show you know, the idea of what needs here. So here when we take a look at the budget itself, so I'm going to still start with income at this point, and we'll just take some estimated, uh, oop, well, let me see if I can do that again. Let me close out of that book here for now. 
there we go. I was going to say, why did that actually kind of zoom out on me? So let's just change a few different things here. So uh, on the actual expenditures on net sales, okay? Uh, let's say that we actually spent, what, uh, 59000 instead. So I just type in 59000 and notice it started to calculate and show us the differences here. And this has already been formatted for us. Assets uh, that, that we had, let's change that to, let's say, 600 okay? So now we can just do something like that. Now, that's not super impressive, Don. I've already showed you that. But the formatting is kind of neat, okay? But the other things that you can also see, of course, is that it gives you the way to scale or to show exactly what you want. So we can remove some of these things or sort them. We can tell it to search by certain one of these numbers and not by all of them if we wanted to. So it's a lot more powerful. But Don, that's not it. Notice down here at the bottom, this was designed as what we call a workbook, which means they all work together. If I wanted to actually show a summary, I can come here and now look, Don, Here's what's happened on the summary. It's not only provided what I wanted here in terms of my numbers and calculating it automatically, but I can see that it turned it into a chart, okay? That now somebody, were, if I can, let me see if I can not uh, zoom in so much and get that scrolled up here. And I, one of the challenges that we used to have was that if you were going to a meeting and you wanted to present a chart, people used <laughs> to go to print shops and get them right. to print up the big charts. And then if you realize, ooh, this number's wrong, I need to fix it, the chart had to be redone, right? And that was a big challenge. But here, this is all dynamic. So right. when you change your values, the, the chart's updating automatically as well, correct? Yeah, it's updating automatically, and it makes it so nice, right? So even at the last minute, somebody goes, all right, Don, we're about to present this, but these numbers are wrong. Don doesn't have to panic and go, now i got to go and figure out how I can you know, explain this. He just simply changes the numbers, and this chart, too, will also automatically change when everything is actually kind of pulled up the way that we want to. So very powerful, once again, to display exactly what we want to, and that's key in a business, right? It helps us to make sure that people have the most up-to-date information that they need, accurate as they need right then and there so that they can make the best possible business decisions off of the idea of some type of uh, financial numbers or whatever numbers that we need. So it's a great utility, something that we should all become familiar with. Uh, so uh, make sure you check out uh, the, the idea here. If you're not familiar with it, uh, we do have shows right here on, on T Pro TV that do point to that to help you to figure that out too. All right, now I, I mentioned presentations, right? When you get up and you display a big chart, Excel does a great job of, of generating numbers and putting them into to graphics like that. Uh, it does a heck of a lot more as well. <laughs> but it's not the greatest for just displaying general like, text information. So right. we have text in Word, and then we have numbers in Excel. And if I'm doing a presentation that's made up of both, it's kind of difficult to use them. So I know that we have a whole third category of software called presentation software. So can you show us an example of that? Yeah, the example that we're going to show you here is going to be Microsoft PowerPoint. Now, most everybody that's watching it, probably at some point in their school, if they've been in school in the last 15 or 20 years, has probably ended up using PowerPoint at some point. Or at because, least being subjected yeah, to subjected it. Yeah, subjected to PowerPoint. Man, <laughs> Don, how many PowerPoint presentations have you sat through? I, I mean, it's it, amazing. It would be hard for me to guess how many PowerPoint slides I've seen in my lifetime, <laughs> and I've seen them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's amazing here. So let's go ahead and show you what, we, what I've installed on this computer as well. Once again, I'm going back to my Windows Start menu, and then I select PowerPoint. And by far, Don, this is the most intuitive of the programs that we have access to in something like the productivity here. Okay? So at the beginning, I showed you like, uh, you know, you could have these templates and just opened up at, you know, most of the time it was a blank, a blank, blank, a blank template. And here it is, Don, blank presentation, you just think it's going to be a white sheet of paper, right? But this one is actually fairly easy for us here. Okay? So Don, if I wanted to create a presentation just from scratch, I think PowerPoint is as helpful as it gets when you see right smack dab in the middle of the screen it says, click to add a title. I don't think it can get any more, well, I guess it could get more direct than this, but not easily. And so if I didn't know exactly, what, oh, click to, oh, look at that. It gives me a blinking uh, cursor here. And so we can go uh, presentation. So we might just start adding in a presentation and say, this is uh, CompTIA. IT, I'm about to type IT, uh, OTV, CompTIA IT Fundamentals here, and there's the beginning of a presentation. Not exactly the most flashy presentation in the world, <laughs> but at this point, at least get the text that Don was talking about. For us to make this a little bit better, right, we want to make a presentation. Of, if I keep showing slides like this to Don, I'm going to say within five clicks, Don's asleep okay, at this point. 
Uh, and oh, not exactly the most exciting thing. So what can we do? What else can be added in here? Well, we could take some of that Excel data, like the chart, and pull that into PowerPoint if we wanted to. But of course, the idea is visual, right? So let me bring up another one. And this one was actually created by our Office uh, Pro superstar over here. Let me make sure I open up the right one. And there it is. Let me open this one up. So this one, though, Don, is actually one which uh, is, hey, let's learn PowerPoint. Uh, yeah, Don is, he, I can see he's drooling at the mouth. He's <laughs> eager for this presentation for me to go through. Now, the goal, of course, is not to, to go through the entire presentation, but just to show you what else we can do, okay? So we can make, of course, a text out of slides. But here it is, Don. Uh, oh, look, cats. Cat okay. pictures. I mean, why not? I mean, if anything gets you <laughs> excited, right, it's the idea here of cat pictures and then adding in graphical elements to help us out to create the presentation. I think these are actually really uh, somebody's pets here. Uh, if I remember, oh look, they, they even have uh, word bubbles, Don. You know, you can't, you can't beat the idea here of adding in additional word bubbles as well. Yeah, of course you can create columns, but now there it is, okay? So Don, now I can actually take some of the stuff that I learned in Excel. I can create tables out of them. I can even import in like a basic, uh, the, the chart, uh, and, and pull it right in here if we wanted to. So all that can be created, and all you're doing is you're creating well, multiple slides, and in the end here, oh, diagrams, of course, you name it. There's different transitions, which we're not going to go through all those. So you can make it fancy where, Don, you got to love that uh, what is that diamond effect, you know, that, mm -hmm. that flips everything over. I, I'm sure you've seen that, what, two or three times before in your life. <laughs> yeah, all the different crazy transitions. It's like watching Star Wars, where George Lucas just went crazy with every transition he oh, could yeah. come up with. Uh, you know, uh, Ronnie, for me, I, I've got, uh, I've done a good bit of public mm -hmm. speaking. I have right. a few thousand hours under my belt. And, <laughs> and, and I've used PowerPoint a good bit. The the stuff that you're showing, this is kind of what the, the, the viewer would see, the person mm -hmm. in the audience, right? They're seeing these slides. But PowerPoint has a lot of tools in there that are designed for the presenter. Right. And so if you were to kick off this presentation, when it starts, it, it goes full screen with the slides for the viewers. You put it on a projector, it goes up on a screen, people see your slides. But meanwhile, on your computer, PowerPoint does a really cool thing, and it puts you in what's called a presenter view, where you see what slide is about to come up next, and you can even create notes and set timing so that you know, I want to spend two minutes on this slide and five minutes on this next slide, and then you can control it. Oh, there. So Ronnie just pulled up the little notes view. So you can have notes tied to each slide. And meanwhile, you're up giving a presentation, and your notes are right there digitally. And we're not having to worry about printing out cue cards or anything. It's just right there. And when you're all done, you can actually print out your slide deck. You create handouts that you give to people, and it has your slides and your notes and so on. Uh, you're brave, Ronnie, because I can't remember how to do it. Uh, <laughs> but I know you can do it. Yes. The way I do it is I ask somebody else to do it for me. Uh, but, <laughs> but, uh, but basically, you can generate these, these different types of handouts, which are really, really cool and, and amazing. So uh, very powerful software. Yeah. So what Don's talking about is right here, the idea of being able to, to print out either an entire presentation or notice that you can print them out on the specific ranges too. But there's also a selection at some point, uh, if I scroll down, let me see if I can go, oops, show what it is. You can even do the list or just the images itself. And there's even one that actually just says print out the notes and then a little tiny uh, 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 thumbnail. I couldn't remember what it was called. Thumbnail of the slide, and that way you can do that. Yeah, I think it, where you've got the full page slides. See that? Uh, that oh, yeah, right right if you pull that oh, one, yeah, I think that's the one yeah. that lets you pick. And yeah, yeah this that... page. Yep, there you go. So now if you take a look, uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now you can see where it actually allows you if you wanted to, to create a physical handout uh, where you could do that, and that, that one will help you out too. So a lot of this idea of the presentation uh, is, is a good thing for us, especially if we're going to have to be doing this. And sometimes they just call on you to make sure it's done. So it's a great way to, to organize your thoughts in terms of the presentation and be able, of course, to, to do that. Now, the only other recommendation is, you know, make sure that if you're doing it, just do it according to what you need to go too fancy. You'll probably see people get a little bit annoyed at your decision to use, uh, <laughs> uh, what, what is the font that everybody loves? Uh, uh, Comic, Comic Sans. Sans. Yeah. Comic Sans. Yeah, people frown on that. But uh, if you want to, go for it uh, and see what happens. There's a whole art to making presentations. It does take a, a lot of work, but having tools like these really do facilitate that. So the three tools Ronnie's shown so far, we, we did a word processor, we did a spreadsheet, and we did presentation software. Those three tools 
are what makes up the most typical office suite. Right. And Microsoft Office is like the number one product out there as an office suite. You'll see the majority of businesses use it. There are other vendors out there that make similar products. There's OpenOffice and LibreOffice, which are our open source versions of Office Suites. They have their own presentation software, a spreadsheet, and word processor. You also have competitors like uh, Apple, where they have uh, the product names are not as creative. They have their spreadsheet software is called Numbers, their word processor is called Pages, and their presentation software is called what is it called? Um, Show or something? Yeah, I don't yeah, remember, yeah. So, uh, so they, they have similar products. So you don't you don't have to deal with Microsoft, but if you're trying to get ready for the workforce. Microsoft's market share on this, I mean, it's not, it's not even close. It's, it's it got to be at least 90, like 85, 90%. Yeah, it, it's 90, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, it, and it's partly because they've been at it so long. Their software is so feature rich that in order for a competitor to create something that's even half as good, it, it's yes. really, really challenging. So the, the Microsoft Office Suite is what you see the most. Now, the Microsoft Office Suite isn't the only option. And actually, it's a lot bigger. We've shown the right. three most popular products. There's Access and uh, SharePoint and uh, Publisher, you name it. There are so many. Yeah. Forgot about Publisher. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are a bunch of other products that are part of it. The three here that we showed were just the most popular. But there's even more software outside of your typical office suite that you see people run into. Uh, for example, diagramming software. That if we need to create diagrams, maybe um, like a company's organizational chart, an org chart, uh, or just flow charting in general. Microsoft Office doesn't have a product built into it that does that. They have Microsoft Visio, a separate product that you can use, and there's a few other vendors out there. Ronnie, can you show us an example of like diagramming software? Sure. Yeah, one of the examples of diagramming software is one that I use all the time. It's called uh, Simple Diagrams. It's not that it's, you don't draw technically you know, exact lines or in scale, but it allows you to actually be able to do some of the things that we were talking about, such as a diagram flow or anything like this. So here's an example of simple diagrams. If I wanted to create a simple diagram, I tend to do networking diagrams. I just use some of the different stencils that they have over here on the right-hand side. I'll just pull a router and then a switch of some sort, and we'll just pull a server over just as an example. And then I can use these connections on the tools that are available to connect these together. That will allow me to do this. Now, this is not the most intuitive program in the world, but at the same time, it allows us to just do simple, you know, diagrams that we need to do. And then we can add in labels if we choose to. So let's take, for an example, here's server one. And then I'm going to copy that because it's easier for me. And then here's uh, switch one. And uh, Don, I think you can see a pattern in my naming here. <laughs> uh, I'm lazy is what it comes down to. And here's router one. Okay. So we can do a simple thing like this, but it can become more complex. It doesn't all, always have to be about network diagramming. Uh, what Don was suggesting as well is that there are basic shapes that are out there too that we can use to help us to draw the flow and, and the connection between them. Hard lines don't have to be there. So here's an example of a diagram that I may actually end up using at some point, right? So this is just to show you a comparison uh, of what can be done and even fancier than this. I do everything in black and white, but you can even add in some different coloring if you wanted to in the background. To change it up to make sure it actually shows you know the, the way that you want it to actually display all this of course is to help out when people aren't understanding what is going on so in networking for us it's important to have a logical diagram or a physical diagram of how things are connected together using software like this will help a lot more than me trying to type out paragraphs of hey here's what's connected to what here i can print this out or i can show this during a presentation and be able to have people understand what's going on so all this can be used in conjunction with those different stencils. If you were to use something like Visio, there'd be even more stencils. And I think you can even create your own if you wanted to, to add in there and to make everything work out. But there's a whole bunch of different tools that are available in all these diagramming softwares. And these are by far not the only ones that are out there. Uh, but uh, at least for, for what I do on a daily basis, this is probably the one that I use as well because uh, it looks good uh, is what, what I like. And it's nice and bold and allows us to be able to, to show exactly what I want. And, and diagrams might be like, like what yours is doing, which is more of a map. Right. Um, you can use them for calculations and other things. I, I do a lot of project management training for, for ITPO TV. And I've got an example here on my computer where uh, I'm doing a critical path method calculation or a CPM. So these are all project tasks, kind of workflow. The arrows are showing the direction that we move through tasks. And we're calculating out how much extra time we have in between each task. 
having something mapped out like this visually makes it a lot easier for people to understand, to see that flow. You'll see decision diagrams done this way. Uh, people who are doing risk analysis or uh, what is it when they're doing um, uh, continual process improvement, CPI, they, they do uh, Ishikawa diagrams yep. or fishbone fish diagrams. Bones. You can do things like that. And by taking information and putting it in a visual form, it really helps things out. And by having it in software like this, as opposed to drawing it on a board, I can come in and update and change these values and, and modify them as needed and then kind of refresh and update or even reuse that diagram over and over again. So products like Microsoft Visio do a great job of this, simple diagrams. I've seen people where they use PowerPoint. The PowerPoint right. actually has a right. whole library of shapes that you can drop on the screen and you can leverage it to create things. With PowerPoint, you have the limitation that it's kind of holding you to the size of a slide. When you go into Visio or simple diagrams, you can set the resolution to whatever you want. You know, maybe maybe you do want to print it, but you've got one of those giant plotter printers <laughs> that you, you can print five foot by seven foot pages. And, and that type of thing doesn't work so well in PowerPoint. But when you get into <laughs> to software that's specifically designed for diagramming, you can really create some powerful, powerful stuff. So, um, so that's a pretty good example of that. Ronnie, I, I know we've got several other applications we need to talk about. What we've talked about so far, I think are really the most common ones, right. everything right here. But we need to get into some that are a little more specific, a little more focused on particular tasks, but we're a little low on time in this episode. So why don't we split off into a part two? Sounds good. And when we get back in part two, we're going to tackle a few additional things. Like I think we've got project management software. We've got uh, uh, accounting, accounting a couple other different things that we'll take a look at, which are, in a way, even more critical than what we've seen here. Everything we've seen so far is really common. We use it all the time. But when you get into really task-focused software, it becomes mission-critical <laughs> software. So we'll get this, a chance to see all that in part two. Before we wrap up, though, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Well, just remember, as you're starting out, you're going to learn about these systems because you're going to encounter them uh, on a daily basis. So being familiar with them is something that a good IT professional should be able to do. So make sure you take a look at this show again and maybe even get some more training on it, too. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be a wrap-up for this episode. Stay tuned for part two. We continue looking at our software, and most of what we've been doing has been running locally as well. We need to talk a little bit about cloud software, so we'll get a chance to see some of that in part two. It'll be exciting. You'll definitely want to stay tuned for that. But as far as this episode is concerned, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. So signing off for IT Pro TV, I've been your host, Don Pazette. And I'm Ronnie Wong. And we will see you next time. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.